yeah we are live all right so let's get started then hey everyone welcome to day 3 of mlrw 2023 brought to you by iitg.ai the ai student community of iit guwahati so joining us today is aniket morya uh, he's a developer advocate at lightning ai and he's also the creator of gradflow which i checked out recently so it is an open source auto ml and pytorch model training library very cool stuff very user friendly stuff and today he will be taking us through how uh, how to train models at scale so we will will be learning how to scale our pytorch code using fabric organizing our code without boilerplate using pytorch lightning and we will also get an inside look into lit llama for those of you who don't know what llama is it is a foundational large language model recently released by meta ai so now enough of me over to aniket sir thank you so much varun for introducing me it's uh, really glad to presenting here and uh, hey everyone so i am aniket mora developer advocate at lightning ai and i will be giving a code walk through of how you can scale your pytorch code with pytorch lightning and fabric and then i will give you a brief introduction of lit, uh, to lit llama uh, lit llama is a apache 2 code implementation of llama which was released by uh, meta and uh, it gives you freedom to use it commercially so let's get started so i will start by sharing my screen okay so pytorch lightning the main idea behind pytorch lightning is you do the science and we do the engineering so if you are a researcher you should be really focusing on your code and research rather than engineering aspect like how to manage distributed uh, training how to manage your hardware how to manage mix pieces and all these things so you can just uh, focus on your research pytorch lightning has been used by more than 33 million uh, users all around the world it has more than 800 contributors and uh, it it's been used by 1000 plus uh, organizations like uh, amazon nvidia meta microsoft so what is pytorch lightning pytorch lightning is just your organized pytorch code and it removes all the boilerplate it also helps you in handling uh, all the device related uh, code for you so you do not you do not have to manually move your data or model to a correct device for example if you are training on a gpu you do not need to manually handle all those uh, code parts so lightning will if you can specify that in the lightning trainer and it will take care for you so in this uh, snippet you can see uh, this box lightning module lightning module is a class which encapsulates your model code your training step validation how you define the optimizer scheduler everything regarding your model training and then in the second box you can see here trainer trainer is something where you can provide your flags for different configuration like number of epochs what kind of hardware you want to train on gpu tpu uh, you can train on your uh, apple mps chips also uh, after building the trainer you can just do trainer.fit provide your model and uh, your data so the trainer will automatically do all the heavy lifting for you and train the model for you strategies so in this world like we have very large models and lot of data like large data sets so it's it sometimes it is not easy to train a model on a single gpu so you might need to distribute your training across multiple devices like a uh, four gpu or more even more than that like uh, chat gpt or gpt like models are being trained on thousands of gpus so uh, suppose if you are a researcher and wants to train a model on four gpus all you need to do with pytorch lightning is specify devices as four and if you are training on a cuda so you can just uh, specify accelerator is equal to gpu then there are different types of uh, distributed training strategy for example ddp which comes directly from pytorch and deep speed which was created by uh, microsoft and fsdp it is its full form is full uh, fully sharded data parallel so you can also uh, it can shard your model onto multiple devices as well so there are different strategy and all these strategies are available to you in directly in pytos lightning you do not need to make any code changes and you can just specify 
for if you want to do FSDP, you can just specify in the trainer flag like strategy is equal to FSDP and PyTorch Lightning will do the heavy lifting for you. The anatomy of the model.fit. So if you are wondering what does this model.fit do? So here is the uh, pseudocode explanation for you. So as usual, it will iterate through your data loader, pass the data through model and do call training dots training step, which is basically, and after that it will do the backward propagation from the loss calculated and it will update your model parameters using the optimizer of your choice like Adam or uh, stochastic gradient descent. Trainer has uh, multiple aspects. So uh, trainer basically take the training step and like validation and test steps for your, from your model to train, uh, like to call it at appropriate places. And it has accelerator. It also supports different callbacks. For example, if you want to check, like save your checkpoints, you can use model checkpoint callback. Or if you want to stop your training uh, earlier based on the, like if your model validation loss is not improving, you can use uh, early stopping and different strategies. So it, it, it can clearly see that it, it uh, removes all the boilerplate for you, like it abstracts everything, but it also gives all the flexibility to you by in the lightning module. So you can uh, control your training step, you can uh, control your like training epoch, everything inside the lightning module. And it, it, with like appropriate strategy and different settings like mixed precision, you can train even train like trivial plus parameter models with using PyTorch Lightning. And uh, PyTorch Lightning is, is battle tested. So if you have used Table Diffusion, which was a trending text to image generator model, and it has been trained using PyTorch Lightning. So uh, PyTorch Lightning really solves a lot of problems for you. But sometimes as a researcher, you might need a uh, full control of your training loop or like full control in your code. So we have created something called Fabric, which is basically your PyTorch, raw PyTorch training loop code, but you can take advantage of accelerators, mixed precision, all these, like all the tools that has been integrated into PyTorch Lightning directly. So you do not need to like, uh, depend on a framework, you do not need to implement lightning module or uh, trainer. So suppose if you are doing a research from like a few months back and you have a large code base, you do not want to migrate it into PyTorch lightning, you can directly use fabric, which requires as less as like three lines of code changes and you can just accelerate it with uh, all the cool strategies available in PyTorch lightning. So fabric basically, uh, is a bridge between raw PyTorch to PyTorch Lightning. And here is what Fabric does. So there, there are three steps to uh, using Fabric. The first one here is, first we define Fabric object. You can import it from Lightning, uh, import Lightning as L, L dot Fabric. And similar to the trainer flags, you can specify your accelerator, mix precision training uh, settings and uh, strategies, everything here. The second step is you need to set up your model, optimizer, and data loader. Uh, this step basically makes sure that um, your model and your data is moved to correct device. Like if you are training on a GPU, data dot data dot to um, CUDA is called at appropriate places. Then uh, third, you can like write your training loop as you write in your PyTorch code. It, everything would be same, just like just three lines of code changes and and then you can specify number of devices is equal to four it like your regular PyTorch code would run on four different machines and all the back propagation everything will be taken care of you uh, you do not need to write any ddp code in your PyTorch, so you can just focus on your research and you can handle all the code complexity by yourself while uh, utilize all the cool things from black fabric So uh, Fabric also provides you the logger, so you can log your loss accuracy using TensorBoard logger, and uh, you can save your checkpoints uh, in uh, distributed training as well. So uh, one thing is when you are training using distributed training, 
you have suppose four process multi, uh, parallel processes and you need to make sure that all the four processes like do not start saving at the same point or like uh, they are like in sync at least so um these are some of the flags that is supported by fabric devices for number of devices accelerator for different hardware strategy for distributed training settings and precision so you can set it to 16 it will uh, train your model with mixed precision setting and here are some of the logger example like csv logger tensorboard logger and how to log you can just call fabric.log um, it's it's kind of key value pair so you can pass your key like loss and then your loss value you can save your checkpoint using fabric.save you can specify your model the path where you want to save it and fabric will save it and uh, the communication API, it is a distributed communication API when you are training your model on multiple devices, hardwares. So you, there are a few concepts like world rank, uh, world size, global rank, local rank. It's basically um, these things are used to, sp to locate your node or locate your machine. So if you have uh, two machines like machine one and machine two here, each machine has four GPUs. So uh, with the local ranks are like zero, one, two, three, so that you can specify that if global rank is zero, that means you are going to machine one and GPU one. If global rank is three, you are going to machine one and GPU three, then it, it is basically used as an identifier for your um, process or you can say your hardware. So these things are uh, directly available to you when you are using fabric, like you can say fabric dot global rank, local rank, all these things. Uh, there are a few uh, methods which is uh, usually used while uh, using distributed settings. So if you want all the processes to wait while you do certain process, certain um, things, so you can do fabric.barrier and it will stop everything. And so you can see this red line here. So all the processes will come at that point on only that they will uh, start executing. So suppose if you are downloading a data set, uh, across four different processes. So it, it's possible that uh, one process might complete it faster. So you want only to proceed to next line of code once all the processes download the data set. So you can uh, barrier, apply this barrier. Uh, broadcast, it's a method to send all your data to across all, like all other devices. Uh, with gather, you can uh, gather all the tensor values from all the other uh, devices and similarly reduce is used when suppose if if I am calculating loss on four devices and I want to average the loss so I can call all reduce my operation would be sum. Uh, finally, uh, lightning 2.0, like uh, we recently released lightning 2.0 and it is like with this release lightning uh, pytos lightning apis are super stable and uh, for like trainer and lightning audio like all the apis would have like no change at all like in future like if possible obviously and um, you get full control with fabric and it is completely compatible with pytos 2.0 so now we will uh, move forward to some code walkthrough so I am going to open my code editor here. Okay. So I am going to train a model on CIFAR term data set. And th obviously this code example can be adapted to some other data set easily. So I am using uh, CNN here to train my data, uh, to train my model. First import torch and what I'm doing here is uh, first I will go through a raw PyTorch code on how I will train a, a model which using just Py, uh, raw PyTorch like without PyTorch lightning or fabric and then I will move into fabric to show you how you can utilize fabric to train your model. So 
here it is um so in the main method like first we import everything like torch and torches and transforms these libraries will be used uh, down below to load the data set they provide some helper function like to load the data set create augmentations and create the model so first we create a transforms augmentation basically we convert the image into tensor and then normalize all the pixel values specify the batch size and use torch vision data set module which provide cfar 10 utility to download your data set so I have created my train set, then created a data loader from it. I am using a batch size of four. I have defined my model here, which is just like some convolution uh, max pool and linear layers. So uh, if you are like not compatible with all this, like uh, creating a model, building a model, like I think there are a bunch of courses which are openly available online for free. So you can take one of those, like I think uh, a course from Stanford, I think it's called CS uh, two three one N. It's it, it's taught by Andres Karpati. It's great. Um, and then we have defined loss function, our optimizer, and the fabric object. So we have written our training loop here. We are iterating for two epochs. And this is our, we are iterating through the training data loader. We load our input and labels from the data. First, we have to call optimizer.0 grad so that we can clear the gradients from previous epoch. We pass our input through the model, calculate the output. And once we calculate the output, we need to create a loss. Basically, we need to find out how different is our prediction from the ground truth value. So, here we have calculated the law, loss using our cross interpret loss. So I have passed output and our ground truth labels. Once I hit the loss, I need to back propagate it. So I will call backward, uh, fabric dot backward. So if you were not using fabric, you would call loss dot backward. And but with fabric, you need to call fabric dot backward. So what it does is, um, if you are training with DDP or uh, deep speed, you do not need to write the code specifically for DDP or uh, uh, deep speed. So Fabric takes care of that. And otherwise you would have to like write a lot of different code. If like, if you want to change the strategy each time you'd have to make changes to the code. Uh, but here you have the flexibility. You can uh, only specify Fabric the backward. Then call optimizer.step. It basically updates the gradients of your model, uh, parameters of your model based on your loss function and uh, backward. And this is how we write the training code for, um, like training a CNN model using Fabric. So to train this model, I need to do Fabric train Python train Fabric.py. I just call it and I'll, so. I have defined the fabric object here, so I can specify fabric is equal to CPU. So it will train my model on CPU, but I am currently using an Apple uh, M1 laptop, so I can specify MPS and it will automatically train my model on MPS device. And if I'm not using fabric, so what I would have to do was inputs is equal to inputs to, so I have to manually move it to MPS, uh, which is like, if I want to move from MPS to CUDA, I have to manually edit it here. So Lightning takes care of all of these things, which is uh, great. If you want to train on multiple devices, you need to do devices is equal to two, three, four. I would only like to train on single device. Strategy is basically if you want to use DDP, just specify DDP here. If you want to use deep speed, uh, these are like different implementation of distributed training strategy. So you can just use deep speed, FSDP, anything here. So let's check out what are some of the, so you can also uh, enable mixed precision. So the float 16, you can also uh, set 64, I don't, think if anyone uses 64-bit uh, precision for training. 
but yeah, it's the option here. So let's try to train our model. Cool. So I have trained it for two epochs and it will go through all the two epochs in the model uh, and print the loss for us. No, oh, I haven't printed the loss. So you can, you can uh, count the total number of iterations and like average out the loss and print it out here. So if, if you see, uh, it took me like around eight, like 70 or uh, yeah, 77 lines of code to like implement all of these things. Like uh, I have to manually write op call optimizes dot zero grad, uh, fabric dot backward optimizer step. So if you like, if you use PyTorch Lightning, it further simplifies your code. Like it removes all the boilerplate so I have the Python Lightning code in this notebook format so that I can also show you some visuals to you. So uh, while it's training, uh, yeah, it's like, yeah, the mod, oh, it's doing the second part. So while it's training, let's uh, go into Python Lightning implementation of uh, model training for C510. So, First, we import torch, torch vision, transforms, and just like the same, we define our augmentations here. And here we have our classes like uh, C510 classes, plane, cars, ships, trucks, etc. cetera. So uh, let's show the image, what are the images available in this uh, data set. So it's going through, yeah, the data loader and print a batch of data. So we have truck, plane, cat, frog. It's it's a bit blurry because the image dimension is, I guess, 32 by 32, which is very small, like horse, deer, frog. Cool. So I have my model here. And next we import import lightning as L, then we can say, we can define our lightning model. So we def in the lightning module, we define our model first, like in the init method, and we define our cross entropy loss. We define the forward function, and then we have something called training step. So in the training step, we calculate the loss, return the loss, and similarly in the batch validation step. So then we provide our data Touch Lightning will train on, like, will call the training step and validation step for us. Then, if you want to uh, create your optimizer, if you, you have to define this configure optimizer method here, I have created an Adam optimizer and set the learning date here. I have just returned the optimizer. If you want to add some learning like scheduler, you need to define it here and return it. So uh, you can check more how to do that in the documentation, I think. Let me open the documentation for, oh, I cannot open it. Yeah, so basically we can define both optimizer and a scheduler from the configure optimizer method. So uh, we define our lightning module here and then create the trainer. So, so let's do one thing first, train with a CPU and then with a, an MPS. So let's call train.fit here. So whenever you train a model with PyTorch Lightning, it saves your checkpoints and uh, by default, if TensorBoard is installed in your system, it will log everything using TensorBoard and you can visualize all your loss, all the log metrics is in TensorBoard with an EY. So 
I have opened TensorVoid and I can see here, let's uh, make it in a different color, so, yeah. So I can see my loss, training loss here. So it's per step, so it is very um, uneven. Um, yeah, you can, you can basically view everything that you log here. So if you observe this uh, training step, I have done call this method called self.logdiff. And you can also call self.log here like this. It's a key value pair. So you can say train loss or loss. You can provide the loss here. So it will log this to your TensorBoard. And whatever logger you are using, you can use weights and biases or uh, comment or any logger that you like of your choice. Yeah, so log addict is the same as self.log. It's just like you can log a dictionary here. Let's see our tensor board again. So yeah, it's, um, so after a few epochs, the loss would be decreasing. We are in epoch one. So you can also see this uh, in fabric, I had to use TQDM to, um, create this progress bar, but in Pytorch Lightning, this is also there for you. So already implemented. So it, it removes all the boilerplate for your code research, everything. Yeah, so you, you can see the loss is decreasing, smooth the curve. Now. Cool, so we have only trained it for two epochs and it took around one minute, 13 seconds, I guess, yeah. Uh, so if you want to train it on a CUDA device uh, or suppose NPS device, you can just set it here like CUDA or NPS and it will do the thing for you. Let's first wait for this to complete and then and in the meanwhile, if uh, anyone has any question, Varun can uh, interrupt me. Yes, sir. So I just had one question so yeah. while we are waiting for this maybe we could discuss the different distributed training strategies that you had talked about earlier because me personally I have no idea about what those are just a brief one. Yeah. yes so uh, so there are a bunch of different training strategy uh, DDP comes directly from uh, like directly from PyTorch and we, there is DDP, uh, sorry, DeepSpeed, which comes from Microsoft. There's one more training strategy, which is very famous of uh, FSDP, which is a bit different from how DDP act behaves. So with FSDP, so what happens in uh, DDP is suppose if you have four different GPUs available to you, it, it basically divides your data onto like uh, four different GPUs calls the passes your data through the model. Like your model is also replicated across all the four devices, passes your data through the model uh, and sync the model after every, like every training step. So, but the problem in this uh, strategy is that your model is also divided. Like uh, your model must fit onto the GPU memory of a single Suppose if you have four GPU, each of size 16 GB, your model must be less than or equal to 16 GB. It must accommodate uh, within that memory. And uh, if, right now we have like large models like Llama and all. If you want to train those kind of models, you need, you cannot like easily do that with uh, like fit that on the GPU memory. So there is something called FSDP. It's shards your model and uh, also uh, 
activations onto multiple devices so that you can easily train even if you have less GPU memory. So we had a really good blog post from Sebastian Rashka, who is who is an educator at Lightning AI about how you can train a large language models on like single GPU using this strategy. So uh, with FSDP, you can even train models which whose size are larger than your single GPU by sharding it on your uh, system. So I have some, I think it's, uh, you can also check the documentation. It's like written like in a really beginner friendly way. So I'd go to GPU training. What is the strategy? Yeah, so you can find a list here like uh, FSDP strategy, DTP strategy, DTP spawn, DTP speed. So uh, one line about each of these. And if you want to learn more about a certain strategy, you can just click on learn more and learn more about that strategy. So yeah, let's see FSDP. So Yeah, it also has uh, FSDP also has activation checkpointing, which also reduces GPU memory by avoiding storage of intermediate activations of tensors like on your memory. So uh, you, you can uh, learn a lot here. So you can like I just suggest uh, to learn more about all these strategies. Just go to Lightning AI documentation, explore a bit, and we have a Discord community. So if you have any question, just like join the Discord committee, ask like we have different channels for PyTorch, Lightning, and Fabric, training large language models. Just ask your question in the correct channel and uh, someone from Lightning will definitely get back to you and help you. Great, thank you. Sir. Cool, so if, if I uh, want to train on MPS, I just set it to MPS. I think it's uh, the training has completed. So let's fit a game with MPS device. So if you had noticed, like there was a message sanity checking, uh, sometimes while training a model, you can pass a flag. Uh, you can pass a flag for on, like do san validation sanity. Like you can only train on a sample of your data and see if like there isn't any problem in your code or not. If there is any problem in your code, so uh, it's it's called def fast run and it will just iterate through like everything defined in your code and just do a single pass. And you can see if, if there is any error, you can, rather than finding out at a later stage, you can find it out sooner. So you can see like when I specified MPS, I think the training speed has increased because uh, Apple, it's being trained on Apple GPU right now. Cool. So you can also save this model. I think it's already been saved here. So I can see lighting loss version one. Uh, oh, it's not saved. So you can uh, basically add the model checkpoint callback and to save this model, or you can like manually save it as well. Like uh, you can directly save it with uh, your lightning module using toss.save, provide the lightning module and it will save. And I said it, it's compatible with uh, PyTorch 2.0. So a very new feature in PyTorch 2.0 is that you can compile your models for faster training. So you can do like toss.compile, you can pass your model and it's completely compatible. So Lightning will compile your model to 2.0 like uh, for faster run. I think I have a blog over this. So you can also, 
we can, I think we can uh, mention the blog link for readers to learn more. Yes, yeah, so we can share it. So it should be, I had made some uh, performance comparison as well. Yeah, let's see. So with PyTorch 2.0, you can see like the performance gain, 38% on TIM models, which uh, the TIM packets provide CNN models. Dosman 76%, it is a bunch of open source models and hugging phase 52% performance gain. I evaluated on ResNet 50 and ResNet 1551 uh, with compile and without compile and you can see the performance gain. So on ResNet 151, I had a performance gain of 74% and ResNet 50 had a performance gain of around 70%. And yeah, just to compile, you can just enter your lightning module, uh, set the mode and do the training as usual. There is, there should, there shouldn't be any other change. Yeah. So. Cool. So, um, after this, uh, let's also see little llama. Uh, if there is any question about like any step that I followed here, let me know. So the, so there are some questions I think so. So yeah, one yeah. So, so, so how do different precision values make a difference, and how does Lightning support this? So I guess they are asking about the mixed precision that you had mentioned. Before. Yes. So uh, the modern GPUs are like uh, some of the modern GPUs are support lower precision really well like they provide faster computation with lower precision so if suppose uh, they also take lesser memory with mixed precision and uh, how does it impact so there are several ways to train a model with uh, lower on lower precision so if you use mixed precision training uh, the model is trained like your model knows how like your model knows about like it's it's being trained on a lower precision. Like uh, it's kind of uh, it it kind of comes along with loss. And when you make a gradient descent a backward propagation, it it's updated according to that. And when you use in like when you save and use that model in production, it's uh, you do not see like any accuracy impact. So uh, how does Lightning support this? Like Lightning basically allows you like to provide that flag in the trainer and it will make sure that you, you are not writing the mixed precision training code by yourself. So it will make sure that it calls everything uh, that is required for mixed precision training at the correct places, correct time. And it reduces any chance of manual coding mistake. So there is another question. I think the torch compile stats that you had shown before. So why was there possibly a lesser performance gain on hugging face models? I think we saw the graph uh, earlier. Oh, this one. Oh, okay, we saw so, lesser on table. So maybe you could discuss these results. Yeah. So this, uh, so like this performance was uh, calculated by, I think. PyTorch team, but um, I think the reason behind this could be because of some of the operations might not be supported by Torch 2.0, PyTorch 2.x, but once like the respective libraries update all the operations, like there are few operations which might not be compatible and they might fall back to uh, without compilation mode. So yeah. It, it might be possible, some slowdown might be possible because of that reason. And also like it's, uh, I think uh, TOS compile is still in active development. So I hope 
that these numbers are going to improve much more in future. Right, so maybe you could move on to that little Lama part. Yeah, good. So let me show you Lit Lama. So yeah, Lit Lama is basically, if, if you know Lama, Lama is a mod, large language model developed by Facebook and the aim for Lama was to create a model on less parameters, but to achieve more accuracy. So Lama, the performance of Lama is really good. And even the 7 billion uh, parameter model are, gives really good result. But the only problem with this was uh, Lama weights are not available to everyone. You need to uh, sign up for the Facebook form. And up, like after some time, if you are lucky, they will give you the access to their weights and it's non-commercial. Also, their code is GPL, so you cannot really use their code in a, any commercial way. Lit Lama is an Apache 2 implementation of um, Lama model, Lama code base, and you can use it in a commercial way. So along with code implementation, we also added some training scripts and fine tuning scripts. So you can train Lit Lama if you have uh, that much of competition and you can if you have access to weights, like I think you can get the weights from Hugging Face or like if you are lucky, you can get from Meta itself. So you can convert that into Lit Lama format. Uh, the convers conversion scripts are available in the repo itself. And once you've converted to Lit Lama format, you can do inference on like around seven GB GPU memory. And uh, you can also fine tune around on around 20 GB of GPU memory. So if you have a data set, for example, uh, an instruction tuning data set from Dolly, which was open source recently by Databricks. So you can download that data and fine tune your Lama model uh, for your purpose. Or uh, you can also, I, I guess, uh, curate some data set and uh, train it on for your purpose. So let's um, move forward. The code of Lit Lama is written in such a way that it should it is readable and anyone who wants to even like not only for implementation and training who wants to learn how to implement uh, these kind of models can come and uh, read through the code. It's really readable and it's uh, without like a lot of hacks or, or anything. So you can read the code, learn through it through it, like make changes and see what happens. It's numerically equivalent to original model. That means we have to make sure that the result of the original model and our implementation are same. You can run Llama on consumer devices. We have implemented quantization and uh, lower precision weights for so that you can load it on like around seven, even seven GB of memory and uh, do some text generation. You can even, you can build some API around it and deploy it. So it's it's been an active development. We have been doing a lot of things, like a lot of experimentation and it's also open to contribution. So if you like to contribute to open source, we really welcome you to come check our issues or like if you get any issue while training or fine tuning or trying out the model, just create an issue or, and we can discuss if you want to contribute, you can fix the some of the code and uh, it will be merged to our code base. Right now, there are two, two fine, -tuning, fine tuning techniques which has been implemented in Llama. One is LoRa, another one is Adapt Llama adapters. So these techniques allow us to train models, train these LLMs on uh, with less memory requirement. So uh, I think like we cannot go much into detail. It's like last topic about the these uh, fine tuning techniques. Um, but we have like you can go to our blog post. We have a lot of different articles covering these things. 
So yeah, uh, we also provide some scripts for preparing your data set. So for example, if you have uh, your custom data set, you can take that data set, convert and train on a custom data set. So you, it, it's really easy for you as well. And since it only takes around 20 GB, I, I guess you can uh, train on a consumer uh, GPU. Yeah, that's about Fabric. Like if uh, there is any question around it, let me know. So I think there's a question related to the previous segments. Uh, yeah. Can models trained on normal PyTorch code be optimized? And are there any limitation with pre-trained weights? So can models train without uh, PyTorch Lightning be optimized? Is that the question? Yes, I think they're talking about the backward compatibility of all this. Maybe. OK. Yeah, so if like uh, PyTorch Lightning, when you like train a model with PyTorch Lightning, you have direct accessibility to the TOS model. Like um, if I print this, it is a lit model, but if I do model dot model, I have direct accessibility to TOS, TOS model dot like I TOS dot NN module. So it, it's nothing but your PyTorch code and you can, it's fully compatible with PyTorch. It's, it's just uh, like, you can say organize PyTorch with less boilerplate and um, all the engineering there for you. And if you are talking about like how to optimize like with TOS compile, yes, if like TOS dot compile directly comes from PyTorch team. So you can, if you have a PyTorch model, you can like do TOS dot compile and uh, compile the model for you. Yes, sir. So I also had a doubt. So these topics are relatively new for most of us. Like most of us are not used to talking about training models at scale, but with the coming of all these language models and foundational models and stuff. So this will soon become a necessity for many of us as well, probably. So maybe you could recommend some uh, paths to start learning about this stuff. Yeah, that's a very interesting question. So I, I what like I think about large language models is that I think the fundamental remain the same. Like it's all built on transformers and some modifications on transformers. So I guess once you learn transformers and like play with any of the model, like you can read some of the latest paper, learn about it, um, and you can. The the best way is to learn the fundamental and then just like play with models, just play with the code, get your hands dirty. Yeah, that is the best way to learn something in my opinion. Yes, sir. so I see another question here. So they're talking about models that generally wouldn't fit on the memory of a GPU. So yeah, so they, they're basically talking about how do they start learning about training models at scale and this kind of stuff. So they're asking what we learned today. How do we maybe go out and learn more about it. So, yeah. yeah. So like, yeah, I, I talked about FSDP, which you can use to like train those kind of models, which even do not fit on a single GPU. So the best thing, like the first thing you can do is like go to the fully shared data parallel documentation and check out how it works, what, how it's implemented. You can read the official blog posts around it. Uh, it, like it's already available here, all the architecture diagrams, how it works. You can read more about this by like, I, th I think everything is available online. So uh, I, I, what I usually do is like, if there is something, for example, yeah, uh, how to train a model on a single GPU, I will just search that and I got to know about FSDP. I will read about FSDP. I will dig deeper into it. Like, for example, if what is this all gather method, what, what is syncrats? So I can dig deeper, what are the different applications or uh, model training using FSDP. If there is some paper blog, I, I will try to read from there. Yeah. 
So maybe let's wait for a few more questions as well. Yeah, definitely. So I also had a first, uh, just a question like, you don't usually see the role of a developer advocate. So maybe you could tell us something about that as well. Like this is new to me. I, I haven't heard of this role before. So. Oh, yes. So uh, a developer advocate is someone who like it has uh, multiple aspects. So first is like you engage with the community. You try to learn, like you learn what they want, like what they are using, how they are using, how they're using the uh, software and what are the features they want, what the features they do not like, all these kind of things. And uh, apart from that, you share important, like good things, like good resources, uh, like a, write a blog post to learn, to share with the community, share your knowledge by doing by different medium. For example, YouTube, live streams and blog contains going to events. Um, yeah, those kind of stuff. Basically, it is content community and code, like implementing different applications, implementing different um, code examples, and inspire people that how you can do a certain thing. So basically, the, the three, C, three Cs are code, content, and community. These are the main uh, aspect of a developer advocate role. So I see another question. So is PyTorch, Lightning, and Fabric currently supported on online GPU platforms? Like maybe Collab and Kaggle and stuff. Yeah, so to you can install PyTorch, Lightning, and uh, Fabric anywhere. So you can just do pip install Lightning, and you can start using it. And if you want to like learn more how to use, like uh, I guess this will remain on YouTube, so you can watch it again and also like come to the documentation. It's explained here how to use PyTorch Lightning. Yeah, I feel PyTorch documentations are one of the best there. So it's pretty easy to learn yeah. from it. Yeah. yeah. So also, like if you come to the documentation, it is separated into different level skills, like basic skills, intermediate, advanced, expert. You can start with the basic, then go to intermediate, advanced. It's kind of a uh, ladder for you to learn more. Great. So maybe we can wait to see if there are more questions or yeah. anything else you would like to answer. It has been a really great talk personally. Like this is a new topic for me completely. Like we do this traditional oh. ML, traditional DL, but yeah, so yeah, thank you so much. Training like, model uh, scale, I yeah, general, I feel it is a new topic only. So, yeah, I haven't really I, done I a deep dive into like, it. With, yeah, I think with foundational models, models like stable diffusion and all these large language models, I think uh, training, distributed training plays an important role. So, yeah, if you want, like, uh, we can do more deep dives later on. Sure, sir, sure, sir. definitely consider this. Right, so if I guess I don't see any more questions, but sir, thank you really much. Thank you very much. This has been a very great talk for us. And I'm sure we yeah. can have more such talks in the future because this topic is definitely going to gain importance even more in the future. Yeah. So I'm sure more yes, and more definitely. people will want to. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's such an honor to uh, interact with your community. and. Uh, if you need any help, I am available on Twitter, LinkedIn, and also you can join our Discord channel. Like if you have any question, you can just directly ask there. Uh, everyone from Lightning is very friendly. They are like very helpful. So they will definitely help you out with anything. Yeah. Great. So, Thank you so much. Thank you, I guess. Yes. Thank you.